For this question, I think it's useful to visualize divisibility on a number line. In this case, we're talking about divisibility by four. So we can say that every fourth number on the number line is a multiple of four. And as we go to the right from a multiple of four, we're going to have a remainder of one, remainder of two, remainder of three, and we're back to remainder of zero at the multiple of four. And again, remainder one, remainder two, remainder three, remainder zero, remainder one, remainder two, remainder three, remainder zero, and so on. Now the question wants to know in particular, what is the remainder when we divide x by four? In other words, which of these four categories of numbers does x belong to? And I do think it's a good idea to think of these as categories of numbers. So in the context of divisibility by four, there are four types of numbers. There's those numbers that are remainder zero, also known as multiples of four. There are those numbers that have a remainder of one when divided by four. There are those numbers that are remainder two when dividing by four. And there's those that are remainder three when dividing by four. So there's four different categories of numbers and we're asked which of those four categories does X belong to? Now statement one tells us which category x plus one belongs to. But going back to our visualization on the number line, if I know which category x plus one belongs to, can I infer which category x belongs to? I mean, x is just one unit to the left of x plus one on the number line. So if x plus one belongs to the category of remainder three, well then x belongs to the category of remainder two. So statement one certainly is sufficient on its own, and we can go ahead and eliminate the answer choices that claim that it's not. So B, C, and E are gone, and we're down to A or D. Now statement two tells us which category 2x belongs to. Well, we wanted to know about x. So I think for statement two, probably the right move is to try to make an inference about x by reducing that statement by a factor of two. So instead of saying 2x when divided by four, we'll say x when divided by two. In other words, I reduced that ratio. Essentially, they're giving us a ratio, right? 2x to four, that's the same thing as x to two. So I'm reducing by a factor of two and rephrasing the statement to say, when x is divided by two, the remainder is zero. Now, we wanted to know about x in the context of divisibility by four, not divisibility by two. So unfortunately, the statement is giving us information that's not exactly in the right context, but maybe I can still make an inference to the right context. Is there anything at all that I can say about which category x belongs to in divisibility by four based on knowing that it's remainder zero when dividing by two. Also known as it's even, right? We could just say statement two tells us that X is even. Well, I can say something. I can say X definitely belongs to one of two categories in divisibility by four. It either has a remainder of zero or it has a remainder of two. It does not have a remainder of one or three because those categories are reserved for odd numbers. And you can see that by plotting the multiples of two on top of our number line that has the divisibility by four cycles. And you can see there that, of course, every multiple of four is a multiple of two. And as we move two units away from that, you're going to again have a multiple of two. So statement two does narrow it down for us. We started out with four different categories that X could belong to. With statement two, we narrow it down to just two categories, but that's not enough to answer the question. We would have to narrow it down all the way to a single category in order to be able to answer the question. So statement two is not sufficient on its own and therefore the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.